Hi guys, Mrs. Nelson again. I'm going to start reading a new, a couple of chapters from The Collector, and I'm reading this with permission from Scholastic. Chapter 6. Vanessa was a lifesaver. She walked me to my next class after lunch. Somehow, just having her around made my life easier. No one bumped into me in the halls, and no one called me any names. In fact, it almost seemed like people stepped out of the way when we passed. If they seemed to be paying me any attention, it was more out of shock than anything else. I knew what they were thinking. How did the new girl become friends with the coolest girl in school? I honestly didn't know how either, but I wasn't about to question it. Not when she seemed like the only thing that kept me from getting shoved into a, a locker on an accident. A few periods later, I stepped into my English classroom, nervous as always, and there was Vanessa. I'd spent the day having to find a seat beside people who clearly didn't want me around, based on the Snickers or the pieces of paper that got thrown at me. This time, though, Vanessa smiled like she'd been waiting for me. She moved her books back from the desk beside her so I could sit there. Had it really been that easy? Had I really just made such a good friend? All through that class, no one giggled and no one threw anything at me, not even when I raised my hand, hand to answer a question. Vanessa was even waiting for me after school. While the rest of the kids ran off to catch a bus or get a ride home, she stood outside by the flagpole. Once again, she smiled when she saw me. Before I could walk over to her, Anna stepped behind me. The school was so small they had all the grade levels in one building. How was your first day of third grade? I asked her. We started walking toward Vanessa. I hate it, she replied. Oh no, why? She didn't seem to want to answer at first. Instead, she reached into her backpack and pulled out her little teddy bear. Kids were mean to me, she said. She sounded like she wanted to cry. They were mean to me too, I replied. But look, I made a friend. I'm Vanessa, Vanessa said, shaking Anna's hand. You must be Anna. Josie told me so much about you. I couldn't remember saying anything to her about Anna, but that wasn't surprising. We'd talked about a lot at lunch, and I'd probably mentioned Anna at some point. Besides, Anna was smiling so hard at being noticed, I didn't want to question it. How was your first day, Vanessa asked. Kids were mean to me, Anna replied. She took my hand as she said it. I want to go home. Vanessa looked concerned, but then her smile returned. You don't want to go home. It's only the first day. I'm sure you'll make a new friend soon. Everyone hates me, Anna replied. Oh, don't say that. I'm sure there are some great people you haven't met yet. You just have to give it time. Vanessa reached into her purse and pulled out a piece of candy. I'm not supposed to take candy from strangers, Anna said diligently. I could tell she really wanted to take it. She always had a sweet tooth. I'm not a stranger. I'm Josie's new friend, which means we're really friends too, even after you make one of your own. Anna smiled and took the candy. Vanessa handed me a piece. Do you want to come over to our house? Anna asked. That's so polite of you, Vanessa said. It made me wish I'd asked first. I was going to, but it seemed awkward, especially since it was only our second day with Grandma Jeannie. I was partly relieved when Vanessa said next, I'm afraid I have to go home and take care of my aunt. Maybe next time. I just wanted to make sure Josie got through the day okay. I did, I told her. Thanks. Vanessa smiled like I'd given her the biggest compliment. Good. See you at lunch tomorrow. It was a pleasure meeting you, Anna. Vanessa turned and walked away. I wondered if her aunt was going to come pick her up or if she would walk home. The school was in the middle of nowhere and town seemed like a very long way to walk if that was where she actually lived. I hadn't gotten around to asking her. She's really cool, Anna said, watching Vanessa go. You're lucky. I wish I had a friend like her. You will, I said. I pointed to the parking lot before she could get start looking sad. But look, there's mom. Anna did a little jump and let go of my hand to run over to mom's car. I felt the little bubble of happiness inside of me deflate. Meeting Vanessa had made my day, 
But now I remembered I had to go back to a house with no TV and no internet and barely any cell phone reception. It made me wish Vanessa had accepted Anna's offer to come over. Though I was still a little worried about that Grandma Jeannie would only manage to scare her away. Chapter seven. What was that? Anna's voice shook when she looked up from her toys. We were playing by the old swing set in the backyard. Well, she was playing. I was up in the small fort working on my math homework. Why did teachers think it was okay to give us homework on the first day? What was that? What was what? I asked. I didn't want to climb down and see. I was too full from the spaghetti mom had cooked to move. That noise. I don't. She yelped and before I could finish the sentence, she was scrambling up the ladder. She nearly crushed my homework when she came up. Careful, I yelled, but she shushed me immediately and pointed one shaking hand toward the woods. I went quiet. For a while, I didn't hear anything except my heart and Anna's quick breathing. A few minutes passed. I was just about to, go, to tell her to go back down and keep playing because she was being silly and I had to finish my homework before it got dark. Then something rustled in the woods. My skin got goosebumps, even though it was warm and the sun was still shining above the trees. What? I whispered. Another rustle cut me off because it wasn't just the sound of something creeping around and snapping bushes. I heard a voice, an old woman's voice. Josie, it hissed like wind in a graveyard, like the voice that chased me in my nightmare. You can hear that? I asked Anna. She nodded solemnly. I didn't even bother grabbing all my homework. I took Anna by the hand and bolted. Chapter eight. I didn't get mad at Anna when she asked me to sleep in my room last night, that night. Honestly, if she hadn't asked first, I might have asked her. I didn't want to be alone in the too big room with its two big windows overlooking the too dark forest. It felt like the shadows could attack me in there, even with the nightlight on. I had to ask Anna to bring hers in because I was supposed to be too old to sleep with a nightlight. I had to ask mom to bring in my homework earlier. There was no way I was going outside again. I made up some excuse about feeling dizzy when I climbed the ladder. I didn't think she believed me, but she still owed me one for moving us out here. So she went and got it. When she returned, I studied her reaction to figure out if she'd heard anything. It didn't look like she had. Had I just been imagining things? Maybe I was letting Anna's overactive imagination influence my own. Even with the nightlight and the closed windows and Anna beside me, I didn't get much sleep and not because Anna was hugging the covers. Every time I closed my eyes, I remembered my nightmare, being chased through the woods and the creature calling out my name. Josie, Anna whispered. Her voice caught me off guard. I thought she was asleep. Yes, Anna, I whispered back. Do you think she's after us? Who? Beryl. I shivered again. I still had no idea who Beryl was or why we should, we should be afraid of her, or why Anna would think that the mysterious woman Grandma warned us about was the voice we heard in the woods. Though I could think, couldn't think what else it could be. You know what mom told us about Grandma Jeannie, I said. I tried to keep my voice down, but I also tried to keep it strong. I had to convince myself too. Sometimes she doesn't remember things right, like who or where she is. I bet this is part of that. Do you really think so? I do. I didn't. I went on. Whatever we heard was just our imagination, the wind or something. And I went quiet for a few moments. I dreamed about it last night, she said, that I was being chased through the woods. I shivered. Did you find an old house? I shouldn't have asked that. I didn't want her to know I'd had a similar dream. Yes, she said. Her voice was even more scared now, but I woke up before I went inside. I couldn't stop. I had to know. Did you find a doll? She didn't answer, 
At first I thought she had fallen back asleep. I tried to relax and close my eyes. Then right when I started to feel myself go heavy, she whispered, it's all about me. Okay, leave it there. See you tomorrow.